This program is being sponsored by the partners and friends of Keith Butler Ministries. Seeking to reach the continents with the Word of God. Teaching the Word, doing the work, and touching the world. This is the Live Your Faith broadcast with Bishop Keith Butler. And so, yes, Father, we receive our eyes being open, having more understanding of the Word. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Jesus said that you are our teacher and that you would share with us the things that he's saying. So we receive it by faith. We thank you for a continued and greater flow of the Holy Spirit in manifestation, demonstration, anointing of the Word. The Word is anointed. We ask that the anointing will rest even greater upon us as we deliver it. We're open, Father, to whatever gifts, graces, anointings, manifestations, or demonstrations you will see fit to give us today, and we thank you in advance. For we give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. We ask it in that holy, mighty, matchless, and highest authority of all, Jesus of Nazareth, by his precious blood. Everyone in agreement with this prayer said, Amen. Amen. As you see, to open your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 4, please. Praise his holy name. Amen. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. How many of you uh, have been and are participating with us with just 30 days of prayer? Amen. You're praying at an increasing amount. Praise God. We're starting the year off with prayer. Every success is a prayer success first. And every failure is a prayer failure first. Praise God. So, amen. We're not going to have any failures. We're going to have some success. Amen. As, and as we have said, if you really want harvest, amen, got to pray it in. Okay, amen. Now, I want to encourage you this Friday night, uh, amen, is going to be a time of celebration, praise God, for what we believe our prayer being answered, and you're invited back on Friday night for that special time of praise we're going to have this week, and then next Sunday is Celebration Sunday, and I'll be ministering, praise the Lord, on, the, on that subject. In the name of Jesus. We're continuing. I've been ministering in all my sessions on the subject of prayer during this time. But I know you were blessed last week by Pastor Michelle. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for, for your prayers. We don't tell the stuff that happens publicly unless we wound up doing it in the pulpit. But praise God. I want to thank you because, see, the word works. The blood covers. And she, was, she and that baby were hit by an SUV. She was knocked up on the hood, and the car hit the stroller with my grandson in it. Amen. He didn't get a scratch. Okay. Amen. Amen. And as, as you can see last Sunday, she is fine and dandy. Amen. Praise God in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the word. Amen. All right. Now, today I'm going to minister, continue on the subject of prayer, and I'm ministering on points of intercession. Points of intercession. Last session that I was with you, I mentioned to you several verses about God looking for someone to stand in the gap. I'm going to reread a few of those verses that we did uh, two weeks ago. Then I'm going to add on some other things today, which are extremely serious things. Here in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, and we read here verse 1. So I return and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed, and they had no comforter. On the side of their oppressors, there was power, but they had no comforter. And when we read this the other week, amen, and he's talking about they didn't have a comforter because there wasn't a prayer going on before them. Without prayer, the enemy then has power. Amen. Then we looked at Isaiah 59. I'm just looking at a few verses. We looked at, just to put you in remembrance, praise God, since we had a break between me and you, amen, for a week. Isaiah 59, and we'll read verse 13. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Isaiah 59, 13 reads as follows. I'm going to back up to verse 12, if you would. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Our sins testify against us. 
For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressings and lying against the Lord, departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. And judgment is turned away backwards. See, that's important. And justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil makes himself a prey. You know what he said there? He said, so if you decide to walk right, if you decide to do it God's way, if you decide to speak it out God's way and live it God's way, you're the one who will be attacked. That's what he said. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there wasn't justice or judgment. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, no prayer. So what you are doing, I can't tell you how important what you are doing. Okay, amen? Israel at this time is going to face tremendous judgment eventually. They're going to be scattered all over the world for almost 2,000 years before they're reconstituted in 1948, severe judgment. And awful things are going to happen to them. And it's going to happen to them part in part because of lack of prayer and decisions not to follow God's way. And those who would stand up and those who would say the right things and do the right things were attacked for doing so. And justice was turned on its head. Okay? So he reads here. And he saw, he wondered there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness sustained him. The arm of the Lord is Jesus. Amen. Then turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. Amen. I need three hallelujah somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ezekiel the 22nd chapter and we're going to read verse 30 and 31 over there I believe. Amen. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord speaks to the prophet Isaiah and said, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me. Someone who would be in the middle between God and man who understood that they could stand between God and man and can pray from man to God and get mercy manifest for man. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land or for the country. Amen. That I should not destroy it, but I didn't find any. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed, which means I gave them what they deserved. I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Now, all of these things happen, amen, because of decisions by the nation at that time. And remember, the Old Testament was written for our admonition and our learning. So the Old Testament, is, we're supposed to be able to look back at the Old Testament and see the mistakes that they made and not replicate them. And we can see the things that they did well and replicate them. Okay, amen? Praise God. And so that there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. Amen. Everything in life, the scripture, I've taught you about it, everything is a circle. See, so what you're seeing happening now, again, you're seeing the circle come back around in America. Amen. Coming back to this kind of thing. We're justice and judgment. We're right. Amen. The thing which is right is now being said is wrong. And what's wrong is now what's being said is right. And that's what's being taught to children in the schools and everywhere else and our society's turned that way television radio media all this stuff is all now that way same way it's the same thing the difference is that we just have more technology that's what's different uh, amen and so it brought upon them their people wrath brought upon them judgment on the negative side now understand when the bible talks about judgment judgment is two sides Judgment is not always negative. Judgment is positive. The word judgment means verdict. 
See, so there's a verdict, amen, and what verdict you get is dependent upon whether or not you follow spiritual law. Remember, there are several spiritual laws in the Word, for example. The Word tells us in Genesis and Old Testament, Genesis 8.22, as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. So whatever seed is planted, give it time, there will be a harvest. You see that also in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 6, be not deceived, God is not mocked whatsoever, it means good or bad. Whatsoever a man sows or plants, that shall he also reap. Romans 8, 1 and 2 says, there's therefore now no judgment to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, that's following the Holy Spirit and the word, has made me free from the law of sin and death. See, the law of sin brings about death, Romans 6, 20, 6 23, which says the wages or payment of sin is death and all of its ramifications, which includes sickness and disease, poverty, why poverty happens, why war is opened up, amen, and many other negative things happen because it all turns around what happens with covenant people. It did with Israel. Amen? And it does now with us, the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, there are only three groups of people on the earth. That's it. Not black, not white, not yellow, not red, not green, not polka dot. There are only three, the Bible tells us in Romans. It says there is the Jew, the Gentile, Gentile there mean people without covenant, without God, and the church. Amen. So you're either a member of the church of Lord Jesus Christ because you are born again or you are a Jew or you are an unbeliever. How many are in the church? Okay, amen? amen? Praise God. So which way judgment goes depends on what seed you plant. So if you're in, in an area where or in a time or in society where everything that is, should, should be truth is attacked, if you go along with the suppression of truth, then you get the judgment that comes along with that, which is negative. If you follow the law of life in Christ Jesus, makes you free from law, sin, and death, and you stand up against that which has been turned on its head, you will be attacked by those, the Bible told us, who want to participate in the sin and death. But God said, I'll be the one that will lift you up and you'll get harvest. His harvest of blessing. Okay, amen? Always when you get harvest, Mark 10, 30 says, for example, when you get a hundredfold return, talks about hundredfold. It said it is with persecution. See, so when you get harvest, understand you're going to get attacked with the harvest. But amen, while they're attacking me, I'll just run to the bank, okay? Come on, somebody. Amen. But you need to understand there is a price if you're going to stand for right. If you're not willing to pay the price and Satan will use any group to attack you. He'll use your own brothers and sisters. He'll use your own race of people. He'll use other races of people. He'll use government against you. He'll use any tool that he can use to try and pressure you. You have a choice. Amen. Now, what helps us, what helps us during these times like this is that where you have darkness trying to enfold everything, what allows the light of God to come into those situations and snatch people out of that darkness is prayer. Amen. Because we are the ones that have the authority in the earth today. Amen. And the Bible talks about, when it talks about Jesus, it's talking about us. We, Ephesians chapter 1, last verse says, we complete Jesus in the earth. He's the head, we're the body. Can I get three hallelujahs? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now turn to St. John chapter 17, and let's study some scriptures on this today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 17, Jesus makes a very important statement. He, he, Jesus is praying, this is his prayer, for those who would come to know him through the ministry of the apostles. That would include every one of us. All of us 
came to learn about Jesus because of Peter, James, John, Paul, and the rest of them. Amen? So Jesus says here in verse 14, I have given them, that's me and you, I have given them thy word, and the word have hated them. Note that. Because they are not of this world. Say, I'm not of this world. Even as I am not of this world. So, so he said, they are just like me. I'm not of this world and they are not either. I pray not that thou should have taken them out of the world, but that thou should have kept them from the evil, Jesus prayed for us. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He says it again. Amen. You live in the world, but if you are a believer, you are not of this world. At least you shouldn't be. The world should not dictate how you think, how you act, how you speak, where you go, and where you stand. You are not of this world. He goes on to say here, praise God. I'm praying they be kept from the evil of it. Sanctify them, set them apart through thy truth. Clean them up, sanctify, set them apart, clean them up. Through thy, how? Through thy truth. Then he tells you what the truth is. Thy word is truth. That's what the B-I-B-L-E is. The Bible is the truth. The Bible is God speaking to us. People say, I want to hear the voice of God. You can read the voice of God every day. And you can hear the voice of God as you read it out loud to yourself. Are you listening to me? So the word is truth. Now, turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Amen. Say it, the word is truth. Say it three times. The word is truth. The word is truth. The word is truth. Not what political parties tell you. Not what the media tells you. Not what Hollywood tells you. Not even what, what your race or family members tell you. God's word is true. And that's the only real truth. Amen? Second Timothy, praise the Lord, chapter 3, tells us about the efficacy of the word. He says in verse 16, all scripture, every bit of it, is given by inspiration of God or is inspired of God and is helpful. That's the word profitable. The scripture is helpful for what? For doctrine, which is instruction. For reproof, which is conviction and, is, and also evidence. Praise God. For correction, which means for straightening up. For instruction, which means for education and training in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be complete, the word perfect, thoroughly furnished or fully equipped or perfected unto all good works. So the only way we become fully complete and fully effective is that we receive the instruction, the straightening up, the conviction, the evidence, the education and training given to us by the word of God. So the word is the most important thing of all. Now, turn to Genesis chapter 25. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I was seeking the Lord about, all right, so I know you want me to minister on prayer, so what, what do you want me to minister? And he gave me this. I told the wife, I said, ooh-wee. <laughs> I, I told my administrative assistant, I said, I'm going to get some online beat up this week. They're going to beat me up online. And I said, amen, good. Everybody talk good about you, it must mean you ain't doing squat deadly. If they're talking, you must be having an effect. Amen. Amen. Now, let's read Genesis 25. Praise God. Let's begin with verse 20. And Isaac, amen, remember amen. who Isaac was? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the wife, the daughter of Beth, Beth Uel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. She got pregnant. The children struggled together within her. Underline that within her. So the first thing it said was that there are children, and the children are inside. You don't see them. But the scripture doesn't call them fetuses. Amen. 
The truth calls them children. And said the children were within them and struggled. She said it would be so. Why am I, uh, why am I thus? She went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in your womb. Two manner of people shall be separated from your bowels. The one people shall be stronger than the other people. The elder shall serve the younger. So what he said was, those children who are in the womb who are not yet seen, in other words, they have not been born, but they have already been tagged, they've already been called, they've already, praise God, God's already said what's going to happen to them. One of them is, is going to be called Jacob. His name later will be changed to Israel. And through Israel will be a Messiah born called Jesus the Messiah. And through him, you and I get rid of death and get life. But what would have happened if Jacob's mother has decided to abort him? Now, turn to Isaiah 59. Thank you, Lord. In the 59, uh, uh, praise God, make that uh, Judges chapter 13, excuse me. Judges chapter 13. Amen. Joshua, Judges chapter 13. Praise God. And let's read verse 3. Reads as follows. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean, any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Before you see this child come out of the womb, he's already called and anointed. A Nazarite, a Nazarite is especially called an anointed individual to minister God's purpose before you saw him, before the state would recognize him, before the law would say he's a human. Amen. God said, all right, I call him to be a Nazarite. He said, don't even drink no strong drink because he's anointed in the womb. I'm not waiting until he gets out and gets old enough so that I can tell him don't drink. He said, you don't, you don't even while he's in the room and growing. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said, eat not any unclean thing. Why? Amen. For lo, thou shalt conceive, bear a son, no razor come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite. Unto God from the womb, he has a mission. He shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So he was called in the womb. Before he was born. You mean that a child that is born is already a person, is already called, is already anointed? And has a mission. Now, if that child loses his life, then the intent of God had for the mission doesn't happen. If Samson is killed in the womb, then Israel doesn't have someone to help them be delivered. Amen. Turn to the book of Job, please. Job. Amen. 31st chapter. I'm going to drill it down. You say, well, I just don't understand. I'm going to give you so much truth from the word. You cannot dispute it unless you have decided that man's opinion is higher than God's. Or you don't believe the Bible. Well, if you don't believe the Bible, why in the world are you here? What you doing here? You're wasting your time. You don't believe the Bible. Come on, somebody. The Bible either is the word of God or it isn't. If it is, we live by it. If it isn't, 
Amen. We're all wasting our time, and I can go on to law school and finish my law degree. Instead of doing this. Come on, somebody. I'd be a real good lawyer. Can't you see me in the courtroom? <laughs> I argue my case every Sunday. Amen. <laughs> Job 31. We're taking a look at verse 14. What then shall I do when God rises up? And when he visiteth, what shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? You mean God's developing the children in the womb? Did, and did not one fashion us in the womb? Long before you see him. Amen. Even before medical instruments, at least used to be, picked them up, God has made, not only made them a person, he's developing them. And it said, God's doing it. Now, turn to Psalm 71. I want this television audience to see this. Here it is. Amen. Praise God. For the Lord's given me a, an order to, to once again track you through the word so that you cannot say, I do not know. Amen. And that whatever decisions that you make, you make it either for or against God. In Psalm 71, we read here in verse, verse 5, For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding, which means he's held us up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels, my praise shall be continually of thee. Once again, he's holding us up in the womb. He's holding every child up in the womb. God indeed is. Psalm 139. Say, that's enough, Bishop. No, it ain't. You want to argue with me about one verse, two verse? I'll drown you in verses. Since you know the Bible better than I do, we'll see. Psalm 139, praise God. Let's read verse 13. For thou hast possessed my reins. Amen. The word reign is the word kidneys. Amen. He said, God's even in my kidneys. Say, God's working in my kidneys. Health and healing's in my kidneys. I say every day my kidneys function at 100% capacity. Amen. Praise God. The time they said it got down to 55, I put the word right back on it and went right back up to 100. Amen. Jesus is the healer. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Thou hast possessed my kidneys. Thou hast covered me. You are covering me. Where? In my mother's womb. And I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. Amen. God's covering us. Where? Not after we get out. It must not be a piece of protoplasm. It must be a person. Turn to Isaiah 44. Amen. 44th chapter of Isaiah. Let's read verse 2. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. God formed from the womb. Which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou just, just your own whom I have chosen. He goes on to say here, praise God, in verse 24. He said, thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things. So God is at work in every woman's belly. And that, that person inside that belly is a soul before God Almighty that he calls, anoints, and uses. And he's working on them in, their, in the belly. Amen? Now, all of my, all of my children are called anointed of God, and my grandchildren are too. I have one in particular that I know for sure. The Lord told me before uh, my daughter got pregnant, the Lord told me about the boy. 
My Lord told me the boy was coming. I knew she was pregnant before she did. <laughs> Amen. I knew they said they're trying to tell me. We're trying to find out. Well, you know, we're going to take a thing about which way I keep, te- keep trying to tell them. It's a boy. <laughs> Ain't nobody paying me no attention. It's a, I'm telling you, it's a boy. Uh, amen. I already knew he was a boy. And I also know what he's called to do. I know what his calling is. In fact, my, my job is to raise him ministerially. Yeah. Parents got a job, obviously. But I have a job to raise him yeah. ministerially. I know he's called to it. Okay, amen. I'm going to tell you which one. Okay, yeah. Amen. But see, from his womb, He's called and anointed. He's already different. He's very different already. Amen. And indeed, he's a whole lot like somebody you might know. <laughs> now, anyway, praise the Lord. Then check chapter 46. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chapter 46, when we read verse 3, Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly. And are carried from the womb. I'll just give you two more. I'll let you go on that. Turn to Jer- Jeremiah chapter 1. Amen. I want you to see. Because there is no issue more important than who lives and who dies. That is the biggest issue of all with God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came out of that womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet unto the nation. Turn to Luke chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable in here today, per se. Okay. And if you've you've been a person that at some point in your life, you have uh, been a part of that, 1 John 1, 9 applies to you. So if we would acknowledge the sin, which means you've got to acknowledge it, also means don't do it again. But God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. So don't, don't take the past. The past, is, the past don't matter no more. But what you do now in the future, though, very much matters. Come on, somebody. Luke chapter 1, verse 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. He shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Before he comes out, he's already spirit-filled. It's John the Baptist. Amen. You read verse 41. It goes on to say, it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, as her baby was filled with the Holy Ghost. In other words, praise God, a child in the womb can be filled with the Spirit. And what would have happened without if John the Baptist had been aborted by his mama and daddy? Because men participate in that. A lot of times what happens is that the man put the pressure on the woman to do it, all for economic reasons. Amen. Now, how did you and I start? You started, you began as two stem cells. There was the egg, there was the sperm. They combined together into 46 chromosomes, 23 male, 23 female. You have life. Right then. These cells continue to divide until they keep on dividing until you have a full adult. The process didn't start at six months or eight months or five months or 90 days. It started as soon as them two got together. And they continued doing that job till they fully up there. Now turn to Ezekiel chapter 22. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There ain't no bigger issue. 
There is no bigger issue. Not with God it isn't. Not with God it isn't. Ezekiel chapter 22, we read verse 30 once again. And God says here, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me of the land that I should not destroy it. And so when you have what's going on in our nation, the only way that you don't have the full recompense of negative judgment happen in the nation is that the intercessors, the people of God, stand up and pray. Because, see, when you say abundant harvest, harvest can be both negative and positive. Abundantly, both ways. We shout because we've been on the positive side doing what God said. Sowing seeds, so for us, it's a wonderful, and it will be this year, a year of abundant harvest. But for those who choose to be enemies of the word of God, thereby then enemies of God, it's a year of abundant harvest as well. Amen. So you can have a dichotomy happening. You can have wonderful things happen on one end at the same time. The worst can happen all at the same time. And what happens where you're concerned is depending upon what seed you plant with your words, actions, and the like. Shout amen, somebody. Amen. Now, you know, I'm going to talk to folk who call themselves black for a minute. Amen. amen. Did you know that during the civil rights era, which I lived through, during the civil rights era, people like Martin Luther King, Fannie Lou Hamer, some of y'all remember what that is, Whitney Young, called abortion genocide. Even the Reverend Jesse Jackson called it murder. In fact, I'm going to quote you what he said to a Chicago black newspaper one time. He said, we used to look for death from the man in the blue coat, and now it comes in the white coat, unquote. Now, recently you've been reading about New York State and its decision to allow abortion even in the ninth month. And then they celebrate it and danced and shout as though freedom had come. And at the same time, we're pushing to rid of the death penalty for the criminal. So the criminal gets to live and the baby gets to die. In New York City, more black children are aborted than are born. The New York City Health Department says that from 2016, uh, 2012 rather, to 2016, 136,426 children were aborted while 118,127 were born. The only group that's true of was black folk. Like I said, I know they're gonna burn me up. In 2014, 36% of all abortions were by black women, even though they only make up 13% of the population. I have one term to say for that, black lives matter. In the womb, they matter. Now, you cannot expect, you cannot expect the anointing of God and the prosperity of God and the peace of God and the joy of God and all the things that come with God. You cannot go to church and pray for those blessings while you take the lives of God's children. And 
that more than racism and that more than anything else will be the reason why you'll be the bottom of the economic ladder and not at the top. Because no man, I don't care what some oppressor tries to do to you, nobody can stop God rising you up. When the Lord is on your side, Paul wrote, what can man do unto you? He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Prosperity comes from God. Are you listening to me? So the state of New York legalized abortion up to the point of birth, changed the criminal code even, so that there is no longer any separate punishment for murder of an unborn child, which means, so, so if, a, if there's a pregnant woman in her, her ninth month and some bad guy comes and knocks her down and kicks her in the stomach and then her, her child in her dies, okay, it was that you would get charged for the, for the death of the child but now what they've said now in New York is that happens, is that the child is no longer a person, so you don't get charged anymore for the death of the child. I want you to understand what you, what you read this week, this last week, in one of the largest states in America. Amen. And then three of the four of the states said, we're going to join you and start a trend across the country with this. You need to understand Right, it turned on his head. Justice inverted. Where the criminal gets off and the innocent pay the price. Does that sound like Isaiah to you? The most endangered person in New York is not someone that lives in one of the crime infested neighborhoods not someone that lives in a place where, where your life could be in danger walking the street. Statistics tell you, show you, it's an empirical fact. The most endangered person in New York is an unborn black child. And so our prayer needs to be focused this week. And I'm saying to my staff and everyone else, our prayer needs to be focused this week on this being reversed. Amen. Our prayer needs to be focused, praise God. Amen. That our eyes are opened, and the nation's eyes are open, the court's eyes are open. Amen. People of all races, creed, and colors' eyes are open. Amen. That they understand. America is going to remain blessed. It can only happen if we stand for life. This is not a political issue. These scriptures existed before there was an America. Amen. This is not the first time this happened either. This happened with Israel. Israel, the only difference was they sacrificed their children and they did it in the name of Baal. They did it in the name of foreign gods and so they sacrificed their children. They didn't treat their children as the treasure, as the Bible said. Blessed is the man that has this quiver full of them. Are you listening to me? And they did that before. And they inverted the justice. And what happened was they paid the price. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. What he did for one, he must do for other. But they didn't have an intercessor to stand in the gap. Today, our intercessor is Jesus, and then from Jesus, us. Amen. Not only can we stave off the judgment, so to speak, we can praise God, pray that the eyes of the understanding of the nation open. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is critical. I said this is critical. We are at what the scripture calls as the end of days. Soon I'm going to teach you, teach, I'm going to go back and teach you a Bible prophecy lesson. And I'm going to show you where we are now. 
We are at the end of days. And the closer you get to the end of the days, the more acute everything is. The Bible tells us, and I'll just give you this little, little tad, the Bible tells you how, how the earth will react at the end of, end of the days. You'll have more swings. Everything will be sharper. Weather will be, the Bible tells you, that weather will become more and more unpredictable. It tells you that men will, will become more sinful, become more violent. It goes on and talks about what, what happened in the Middle East and other places. It's right there in the Word. Amen. And we are looking at it and seeing it in front of our eyes. And I'm not going to let you be ignorant. I refuse to let a congregation I pastor stand in front of God when they stand in front of them and say, my, my pastor didn't tell me. Uh-uh. I'm going to stand up and say, they lied. And I'm going to pull out the CD. Bless the Lord, the name of Jesus. There's another area this week to pray for. As we come down the home stretch, I need more prayer from you this week. I want you to double up on your praying. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he said double up this week. We're coming down to the last five days. I need you to double up. Amen. Young people too, we need to double up. God hears your prayer when you're 14 just like he will when you're 94. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We need to pray against the gangs. The gangs need prayer. These young gang members need to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Most of the killing that you're hearing in Chicago, this just horrific amount of deaths, they have in Chicago more battlefield deaths than they do in Afghanistan. More people have died in Chicago in the last 10 years then the 17 years we fought the war, wars. Most of it has been, part, has been precipitated through gang warfare in Chicago. We got them in Detroit, and they're in L.A., and they're in Houston, and they're all over the, all over the nation. Amen. And so we need to focus our prayer, break them up. Let the Holy Ghost convert them, get them saved. I know gang members get saved. Amen. One of my former ministers on my staff that is now, uh, amen, a senior pastor of, of a church in another state was one of the gang members in one of the most hideous gangs here in Detroit. He was a member, member of the gang and got saved. Praise God. We led him to the Lord. Hallelujah. He got filled with the Holy Ghost, went through my Bible school. Praise God. He's a senior pastor today. You can get gang members saved in the name of Jesus. The power of God is stronger than any gang initiation. Glory to God. But it requires prayer. Requires prayer. Say it again. Double up. Pray on the life issue. Pray on the gang issue. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We must pray. Third thing to focus on this week. Pray against the explosion of drugs in America. There is an opiate crisis. Amen. That is spilled out of just the cities. It's now everywhere. Rural America, suburban America, urban America, there is a massive opium crisis, drug infestation. The Bible talks about this, praise the Lord, and it talks about how drugs is as witchcraft and that it is of the devil. Are you listening to me? When you lose your faculties and you are not in control, why is God against marijuana? Why is it that he's against it? If you didn't know he's against it. If you didn't know that he's against it, he's against it for the same reason he's against you getting drunk. Proverbs 21 says, it says, strong drink is raging and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Proverbs 21, that's why we don't get drunk. You are never to allow your faculties to be inhibited. Where you are not fully 100% all the time in control fully of your decision-making process. Why? 
because whatever seed you sow, you are going to reap. And you don't want to sow the wrong seed because you will hide as a Georgia pine. Hollywood has made it cool to be high. Amen. In other words, what's good sense has been inverted. What's equity, what's right, has been changed. And so that the young people in the high schools, all the young people say, praise the Lord. <laughs> wow. I think I'm going to fire my youth pastor today then. Do I have any young people in here? All the young people say, praise the Lord. You in trouble, boy. Y'all don't put him on the same show. I'm just kidding. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. See? So they've made it cool so that young people, young people think, well, I can't fit in with folks unless I follow their way. If you're born again, you ain't going to fit in anyway. Amen. Amen. What's important is not fitting in to their destruction, but fitting in with God to your blessing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And here's another point. These are the things for this week. And pray about, praise God, once again, marriage becoming cool again. There is a reason why the abortion statistics that I stated, particularly of one particular group, are the way they are. Amen. And why seven out, of, seven out of ten black children are born without a father. The reason why is because marriage has declined precipitously in our community. I know the argument, well, there's two, there's two, million, there's two million black men in prison. Well, that happens because, first of all, decisions. Yeah, there, there's a small percentage of them. There's a percentage of them who are there unjustly. Yes, totally agree. But you can't say that 90% of them are not there because of decisions they made. See, you can't say somebody goes and robs a store, robs somebody, and then say they're black, so they shouldn't have to go to jail. And you can't say, well, if they were white, they wouldn't go to jail. Well, if the white man was left off, that's wrong, but that doesn't excuse that you shouldn't go to jail. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. That don't change what happened. You got to fix the injustice stuff, yes. But justice still supposed to be. Yeah. If you're breaking into my house, you break into my house and you're still trying to steal my stuff, you threaten my wife, what happens to you happens to you. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't gonna be good, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> Amen? In other words, you cannot use race as an excuse for wrongdoing. Amen. Good preaching. Woo! Hallelujah. Man, that man's preaching. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody saying amen, so I say amen to myself. Praise God. I already knew I was going to be in trouble before I preached it. The Lord told me to preach it, so I'm going to preach it because you said so. Amen. Come on, somebody. We need marriage to be cool again. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. I'm here to tell you God will provide for you single ladies, even if he has to go overseas and get you a Brit. But you cannot let down from doing what you know is right, the right way, and to yield to the flesh. Because if you yield to the flesh, the Bible says in Galatians chapter, Galatians chapter 6 that you will reap corruption. The word corruption is the word ruin. You will pay the price for that. And I got to tell you, no man ain't worth that. He ain't worth it. I said he's not worth it. Bless the Lord. Now, this nation's roots 
come from a Judeo-Christian background. Don't mean that all the founding fathers knew, knew everything or that they were always right or that they had the right, always had the right opinion. But they, they came here, amen, to try and follow the scripture. They didn't have a lot of enlightenment of it. They didn't have a whole lot of teaching like you do. Come on, somebody. Amen. But by and large, all jurisprudence, our laws were taken from the scripture. And the Bible was, the, was a textbook in the United States for 180 years. In public education. And that caused the greatest nation ever to be formed, to be raised from nothing. A group of people from all over the place. Amen. Amen. And raise them up to be the most powerful and the wealthiest nation that has ever existed in the history of mankind on earth. Amen. Why? Because the word of God was. Amen. That's the history they are now tearing out of the textbooks. And they will not share with children in school anymore. They won't do it anymore. Amen. And they want to act like history doesn't matter. But see, the Bible tells us everything is circular. Now, there's another man, praise God, another individual said, he that forgets history is doomed to repeat it. He's just quoting what the Bible told him. See, the Bible, everything is circular. And so what we have happening is what's happened before, except God said, you can change it. With your prayer. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you are powerful. Didn't the word say that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available? Power that is dynamic in its working brings force. The force of God can change any society and turn it around, hallelujah, and bless any group of people or any individual. But it all depends on what they do about God. Hallelujah. And here's my final point. For prayer this week. Pray for revival. A revival of the church. So many of our churches are no longer based on word. It's true. The, the fundamental bottom line of the churches are not based on word anymore. They're based on politics. Based on music and entertainment. Not based on scripture. It's good for your flesh. Your flesh likes those kind. Because, because none of that requires you to have to do anything. Are you listening to me? You need a revival of the church, beginning with a revival of the pulpit, that the preachers go back to, amen, caring about God first. Amen. And when God is first, then you're not counting how many bodies are in the pews. What you're counting is, did I do what God said? We need revival in the pulpit. Pray along these same lines for sign, wonders, and miracles. Praise God. Hallelujah. To be manifest once again in the church. Hallelujah. So that God's stated will of abundant harvest for 2019 can be a harvest of blessing. And then the Lord gave me two verses to give you. I close. This is precisely from the Holy Ghost. Turn to Isaiah, praise God, chapter 6. Praise the Lord. God is asking you who are sitting in this room a question. He wants to know from you. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? Are you listening? Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. Isaiah had this vision. High and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings he saw. And with twain he covered his face, and with twain that angel covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And he cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. The house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because, Isaiah says, I am a man of unclean lips. We all are, I am. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims or angels unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the thongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquities is taken away, and thy sin purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Who shall I send? And who will go for us, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? That's the question the Lord is asking you today. God is saying, who will go for me? Will you be willing to stand up in the face of those who will speak against you and operate against you? To stand for God. Isaiah said, I'm here, send me. Anybody else would say, I am here, send me. And if you do, the Lord let me, let me know again. Turn to Mark 16. What will happen if you do? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I'll go. I'll continue to go. Mark 16, 15 says, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, hospitals, schools, jails, nursing homes, on the street. Praise God. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, these miracles, these indications will follow the believers. In the name of Jesus, they will cast out devils. In the name of Jesus, they will speak with fresh tongues. In the name of Jesus, if they take up any surface, if they drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt them. In the name of Jesus. They're going to lay hands on sick people on the street and lay hands on people at the bus terminal and lay hands on people in the schoolyard and lay hands on people wherever they go and they shall recover. Amen. What did they do? They did, verse 20, they went forth and they did preach everywhere. The Lord working with and he confirmed the word with indications, miracles, and wonders, say me on the Greek word following. God said, for those who will go for me, my miracle working power will go. And at the end of the day, you and me are going to stand up before God Almighty because he heard our words and he heard us say, I'll go. And he'll say, did you really go? And we need to be able to say, yes, Lord, we went. Hallelujah. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Stand with me in the congregation. No one leave now. No one move. Walk or talk. Stand with me. We've heard what the Lord wanted us to hear today, particularly for these last four or five days of focused prayer. You are a congregation who has light. And so the Bible says, unto much is given, much is required. So God's expecting us to stand in the gap. I know you're busy with your jobs and all the stuff you do. Amen. Praise God. But God's expecting us to do this. How many of you are willing to do this? These are the areas so required. To focus on these prayer things. Praise God. About Detroit. Michigan, 
Praise God. New York, California, Florida, Texas, rest of the nation. Praise God. For God hath called this nation as his instrument to deliver the word to the world. He has called the people therein to be anointed and used by him to bring light in the darkness. He has declared this place the only nation other than Israel to share such an anointing. Yes, I've called you, saith the Lord, and I've anointed you, and I have blessed you, and I will bless you more as you do the things I've called you to do and go where I called you to go. You are the ones that stand in the gap for me, and when you pray, you open the door for me. And when I move, the enemy will not be able to stop me. I'll turn things around, and I'll turn people back to me. So get a running, get a speaking, get a doing, say up the Lord. Yes, and watch, you'll see, miracles, signs, and wonders will manifest through thee. And you'll be surprised at the things that I will do in front of thee. And the world will say, there must be a God, and Jesus is the key. That's what the Holy Ghost said. Thank you, Father. We praise and worship and thank you, Father. All you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart. Romans 10, 9 says, if you will acknowledge with your mouth, Jesus as the highest authority in the earth, believe in your heart, God's raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Pray that prayer right now. He'll come into your heart and you'll never be the same. Getting ready for a day at the office? Are you babysitting the children today? Before you do anything, you're invited to spend a few minutes of your day in the scriptures with Keith Butler. Fresh Water. Available for $8.95 in paperback or $4.99 ebook. Order your copy today. Praise God. The Bible said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And as you can see from our intro, we're ministering in Europe, we're ministering in Africa, many other places, praise God. We're taking the word of God, East Europe, West Europe, praise God. And you know, God wants everyone to hear the word. That happens because people partner with us. They become people who support what we do. And if you want to see the gospel go beyond just your neighborhood, praise God, and go to people around the world with the heart of God, then we want you to pray about being a partner with us here at Keep Butler Ministries. We want to thank you for your prayer support. And remember now, keep fighting the good fight of faith. Overseas Missions Initiative. The lives of many people are being changed dramatically through the works of Keith Butler Ministries. People who have never heard the message of faith preached are hungry for God's word. Praise God, 2019, this is the year of abundant harvest. And we believe that harvest is going to take place in Africa and Europe as we minister over there with KBM and our missions projects. Once again, we want to thank you for 2018, your contribution, allowing us to take the gospel throughout those parts of the world. And yes, in 2019, as you continue to sow seed, I believe you will have an abundant harvest as the Lord has spoken at this year. And so once again, we want to say thank you, and we're looking forward, praise God, to this year being the best year ever taking the gospel around the world and for your life and your family. What you do in helping us with KBM is vitally important to teach the word, do the work, touch the world. Thank you. Get connected. Check out our live stream, church online, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To get connected, go to keithbutler.org. This program was brought to you by the friends and partners of Keith Butler Ministries.